<laughs> yeah. I think it's the battery. I think. And I'm going to make this video about car trouble again because I think it's something that we have to face. And a lot of us, if we're gals, we weren't taught how to fix our car. And there are actually a lot of guys out there that know nothing about the inside of it uh, under the hood. What's going on under the hood? Or what's going on under your car? I'm all for maintenance of our cars. So I'm gonna talk about this and I'm going to go through, I've already made a video yesterday and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna present that. Yes. So here we go. Hello, lovely friend. <laughs> well, yeah. Ooh, lots of greenery. Let's see over here. More greenery. Oh. I'm parked at Planet Fitness. And oh, well, I got a new coffee system and I'm going to try it for the first time with you. We can have coffee together. Yeah, Paul sent me the link to his drip system. So I'm going to use I'm going to use it and I'm going to do it with you. Well, here's the skinny on what's going on right now. The RN, the right now. I've been in Cincinnati, enjoying my family. Got in my van. I've been parked in their driveway. It's kind of a, it's a, a little nook off to the side. It's a little tight, but it goes around. They've got some wood. So I get around it and then pull in. Well, the reason I'm telling you that, because it would make it difficult if I need to call a tow truck. <laughs> so anyways... Um, went to start my car yesterday, spent some time with them. We had pizza. It was fun. Um, was going to get ready for the interview for today with my granddaughter and went to, uh, start my car. I wanted to, it's out in the sun. It's just in the sun. It's hot in Cincinnati. Well, it's hot in the sun. My car uh, heats up to like 102, 106 degrees. Just, just sitting there taking in air or the heat. Well, started my car. It wouldn't start. Nothing. The battery was working because I had, you know, the, the controls on the, um, the panel. No start. And uh, it was pretty depressing. I'm okay now. <laughs> it's depressing. I thought, crap. You know, affording an older vehicle is, is a hassle sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes after you first bought it, because I've had it, what, for about three months now. Sometimes you got to put money into it. I talked to Jack, and we discussed what it possibly could be. But he mentions that he bought, when he bought his vehicle that he has now, um, he had to get a new starter. I think it, it's either the starter or the battery or the electrical system that seems to be draining this good battery. Well, I kept trying it because in Tucson, my key, key fob messed up. Something messed up on the alarm and then it wouldn't let me start it. And it took about 15 minutes. They, I think the alarm system thought somebody was trying to steal my car. So it wouldn't let it start. So I thought, well, maybe that's happening again. So I don't know. But I did, I didn't sleep good last night because I was worried about it. Trying to get a mechanic is really hellacious these days. They're so backed up. Inflation is so high. Nobody's buying a new, new car at all. Or even a new one off the lot. Everybody's trying to fix what they have the best they can. Mechanics are backed up big time. So what am I supposed to do as a nomad who lives in her van? Well, anyways, I'll tell you that. You know, I just talked about that on the worry, the last video. Worry. Well, it's one of the big worries that nomads have is their car breaks down. I'm telling you, it's a hassle as a nomad. If you live in a house, you go, you drop it off, and they either give you a car or they drive you back to your house, or you get a taxi, or you rent a car on your own and you drive around. Well, guess what? We nomads, 
This is our house. Everything we have is here. So if we have to wait for a, a, um, an appointment, um, that means we're stuck. And if it doesn't run, that means we're stuck in their parking lot. Well, I did call one and they said, oh no, you can't stay here. We lock everything up. You can't stay in our lot. Oh, this is Ohio. In Tucson, they would have let me. They would have. I've done that before. And they're, they're a little bit more free thinking. Sorry, East Coast, but it's a little bit more uh, chill town on the West Coast, you know, the Western part of the country than it is over here in the, on the East Coast, Midwest. I mean, some of them never even heard of a nomad. What, what's a nomad? What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You live in your minivan. Are you nuts? <laughs> are you crazy? Oh, well, um, when I'm in, well, I'm a YouTuber and they, they looked at me like, we're not impressed. <laughs> we're, we don't care. Well, anyways, um, so that's a real problem for nomads. I'm just going to say it right here. I have had minivan problems with my 2006 and obviously now here. Well, okay, well, let me go back. In the morning, I didn't sleep well. I was all worried about it. Like, what am I going to do? And then I was going to 53321 like I did in the worry. And I did the anchor, but I was half asleep. And it's like I couldn't get a good anchor. I needed an anchor. So I woke up. And the time element is what's getting me time. Um, nomads have to deal with that. The time changes if they travel from different time spots. What I did was I couldn't deal with the time anymore. I know I'm going off. Um, I couldn't deal with the time on my phones. I changed them all to Arizona time. I'm tired of dealing with time. I'm tired of dealing with the time. My watch I moved to um, Cincinnati time, but my phones are back. I'm going to go to sleep on to Arizona time, and I'm going to wake up on Arizona time. It's a little bit light here, but... That's okay. Okay, so in the morning, I went to start my car. Nothing. Nothing. Well, I will mention last night, it did start. I, I just kept trying it, and eventually it started. And then I would turn it off, and I'd start again. Okay, and I thought, well, this will probably go for the morning. Went to, went to start it, and it was nothing. Now, if you're, if you're a guy out there or a gal that knows mechanics and you're trying to figure out what might be wrong, here's another clue. When I did, st at one point, I kept trying. I thought, well, it started last night and I could keep trying. Um, it, uh, it went, it kind of cranked, but it didn't start. <laughs> yeah. Sound like a baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, it did that. And then I thought, well, I'm not giving up. And I'm glad I didn't because then it eventually started and I kept it going and I got out of that little nook of my dra of my daughter's driveway because I thought, I'll, I'm not even sure that a tow truck could pull me out of that little spot because you have to kind of go in and around and you, you have to avoid some things over here. I wouldn't want my car to, to just yank me out and it hits the house. So I thought, I better get it down the road, way down after the road, the residential road. And then there's a road, and it was called Jim's Auto Service. Well, Jim's Auto Care. Well, I'm not going to recommend it because they didn't, they didn't want to work on my car. And they said I couldn't be there. And yeah, they said no. Um, they said, because it's running now, that they wouldn't even be able to do diagnostic on the starter. Because I thought, well, it's probably the starter. And the reason I don't think it's the actual ignition little system in, in where you put the key in, because those can go bad too. Um, it's, ignition system is a very complex system. There's all kinds of things. But the actual part where you put in your key, that uh, system, instrument, um, I mean, if it kind of cranked over, then it's probably not, I think. I'm thinking it's either the battery, and I'm thinking that there might be an electrical short in this van that is draining batteries. Because um, when I first got this battery, this car, I drove it back to Tucson, and then the next couple days, the battery was dead. I don't know. They could have put a really bad battery in it, but it was dead. The battery I took from 2006, put the battery in, probably a lot of details you're thinking, huh? But anyways, I put the battery, it's a good battery, and... Um, if it is a battery, then it might be draining batteries. What do you think, guys, if you're watching this? But anyways, I'm, um, 
I can't take it to a mechanic right now because everything is backed up. They're backed up. But here's the skinny on why I'm still here. I have to change over. I got my templates from Arizona and then they sent me my title. Well, now I in air in Ohio, it's going to take till Monday after two o'clock to pick up my title, my new title. Yeah, they just and then they'll give me my plate. So I'm stuck here anyways till Monday. So I'm going to kind of play around with this first. If I wake up in the morning and my battery doesn't work and it starts doing it again, it's probably the battery. Because I could start it up right now and it's going to start up. So I don't know if it's a starter. Um, I talked to Jack and he said, well, it could be. It could be there's something stuck. There's these brushes in your starter. And if it's starting to go bad, things can kind of get stuck in there and it won't go. So, and then eventually it loosens up and then it'll start. But eventually my starter, if it is a starter, it's going to go bad eventually. So what do I do? Do I just, I got to leave by Tuesday. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of Arizona. It's too hot. I can't just stay here. There's no reason. So I'm going to leave on Tuesday. And if everything goes well, I'm just going to try to make it. I'm just going to try to make it. I'm going to Cheyenne where Glenna is. Hey, Glenna and family. Yeah. So I want to get there. And she said there's great mechanics there that can, that um, they know that. Okay. So everybody say prayer for me that this car will make it. Yeah. That's what's going on. Why aren't I outside? Why aren't I outside? Well, when I was at my daughter's park there, I was uncomfortable, like, doing filming at her house. You know, it's kind of like, they're very private. And, and she said I could film my granddaughter, do an interview. But, um, yeah, I know. I've been trying to spend time with her. I am really apologize that I don't have a lot of footage going on out here. But on my trip back, I will. I promise. I promise you I will. Um, but I am going to show you some footage here. Um, I got that drip system for the coffee. Paul gave me the link for it and I bought it. It came. And I'm just going to show you what I got. It's this I did. I took it out of the box. It's a carafe. I mean, it's easy peasy, right? Whoops. There you go. So let's make some coffee. I want to do that with you. Let's have some coffee together again. I know I'm in my van. Well, where am I parked right now? I'm parked at Planet Fitness and I'm going to stay here because if I pull in to see my daughter, that means, and she only wants me to park in one spot um, to get in there. And if it doesn't start again, I'm stuck there where I can't. And the tow truck will have a hard time getting me out of there. So yeah, they've got a whole bunch of wood um, right there where I have to like go around and yeah. Uh, so I feel bad, but I just got to be in a place where, and here, if it, if it literally doesn't start ever again, um, I'm not that far. I can actually walk to go pick up my, uh, title and there's a Walmart. I could actually walk to Walmart. I could, there's a Panera bread. Yeah. There's things around here in case I get stuck. If I'm stuck there, I can't. And my daughter's so busy. She doesn't want me hanging around. I know that it's a, it's, that's not not the way we work. We don't just park ourselves in, in our family's houses and say, okay, here we are. What you got to eat? No, she has a full-fledged life. And her husband uh, works from home sometimes. And, he's, and he works for a big corporation. And then she's got two small children. She's, it would be too stressful to just have me hanging in her house all the time. Yeah, it, it don't work that way. So uh, I respect that. We have boundaries. And that is going to be... Um, a real subject I want to talk about boundaries in our lives and what I want to talk about and focus on is not only boundaries because I know a lot of y'all live in a house you're in a six and bricks and I love you for watching this and you want to follow my adventures um, some of you say I live vicariously through you Lee that's cool I love it but boundaries for a nomad is a big deal because you're out here and it's so easy to say, oh, I need somebody to talk to. Let's be friends. Um, it's better. And I know a lot of you nomads don't know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to have boundaries. Well, I will tell you that I'm parked here too. 
Um, I want to see if anything goes down. And plus, I can go into Planet Fitness whenever I need to. Yeah. Um, and it's cool in there. <laughs> it's cool. It's been so hot just staying in my van. It definitely has. Let me get this fan. There we go. I got out my, I got out my big fan again, and I've got my little fan over here. So at night it blows me this way, and it blows me this way. I got it whoop, coming at me. Boop. Yeah. Don't need any sheets or anything at night. Wow. So I want to show you the coffee I got too. Yeah. I'm all excited. Yeah. Um, this is what I got. I got this at Walmart. It was $5, but it doesn't look like a lot of coffee, but I'm not going to use that much. I think this will last me a while and it's small enough to leave, keep in my drawer. It says no artificial flavoring and that's what I'm going for. And it's mocha. It smells good. Want to smell it? I like it. It's a subtle mocha smell. Oh yeah. There you go. There's smell. Did you smell it? Coffee? Coffee? Scratching? Oh dear. Scratch and sniff. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Let's make some coffee. Oh yeah. Okay, move this. Yeah. Move this down so you can watch it. I know you've seen this a billion times, but let's do it again. I keep this in here. It's that non-skid stuff, that material. Put this down. I have a sticker here. It's my Mini Van Lee sticker, and I keep it here so that I know that this is the upright to keep it up. Because I don't want to open this, and I got the bottom. There we go. Butane. Okay. Got my coffee cup. Get some water going. Not too much. Here we go. Let me get my tray out. Okay, here's my carafe. This is real lightweight. Here's my mocha, Starbucks mocha. Let's see what we got here. Right in there. There we go. Keep this closed up. It's my coffee cup. Let me get it. I use these creamers, half and half. They're Land of Lakes creamers. We'll get these ready to go. Well, while it's boiling, let's see. What do we got here? It's 86 degrees in here. I'm going to have to turn the air conditioner on again. I'll be so glad to get to Cheyenne. It's cooler uh, there in Wyoming. And I'm very anxious to get to Wyoming. Of course, to see Glenna and her family, Teresa. And, um, yeah. So, that's going to be a lot of fun. Let me drink some water. I have probably... One thing I have to remember to do <clears throat> is drink water. Are you drinking water? Well, let's talk about boundaries, putting down boundaries. One boundary, I remember somebody telling me way back, they met me and I was I was at the first um, courtside during the first RTR I ever went to. I didn't actually spend much time at the RTR. I just, 
It didn't, um, <clears throat> I will tell, I do tell about that experience when I went there. I was so excited to go, oh, the RTR. And it was at the, um, I was at the fairgrounds, La Paz fairgrounds. So I thought it was like right at 10 o'clock on Monday, Monday morning, the first time. And I pulled in. Well, I went in and we were all so excited and I was just mingling around and I saw Bob Wells, you know, and, um, I saw Sue Ann. Oh, and then Sue Ann came over and she told us, she goes, well, if you're not with the volunteers, you need to go over there and stand over there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. You know, I was like, okay, well, because I was so excited. It's like, hey, I'm going to be there. And, um, I thought, well, that was kind of a letdown, you know, like, oh, it was so sad. And I don't hold it against her, but it, it was kind of a letdown. It was, it was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll go stand over here. And we all were like, we don't understand either. Nobody really understood what was going on. So um, I saw Bob Wells stand over there. So I just, he was kind of close. I was like, oh, hi, you know, I recognize you. And and he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I said, well, should we just stand over here? He goes, oh, you can just stand right here if you want to. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then he kind of walked away. I was like, okay, well, that was that. Um, I wasn't, I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest. I'm real. I wasn't impressed. I was kind of like, it was kind of a letdown. So I found out where some BLM land was and I went and I was like, I can't wait to get out there. Okay. We got water going here. Okay. So let's turn this off. Okay. It's a little hot. Yeah. Get this. Get this. Here we go. I'm gonna pour it in here. Well, it goes pretty fast. Pretty fast. See, I don't. It's kind of hard. I don't know. It's kind of hard understanding this drip system. It didn't spend much time in there, did it? I know. Should I run? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let me see if I can run this through again. I'm going to put it right in here. it right it just seemed like how could that be good coffee it didn't even spend any time in there ouch I just spilled it hmm I know this is you're gonna laugh I, if you want to laugh at me go ahead I laugh at myself all the time I'm gonna do it one more time okay let's see Let's, we'll try that one. I'm making a mess. I'm tired. <laughs> I know. You got, you, I know the, the, I'm the wacky nomad these past weeks. Oh my gosh. call me the wacky nomad for a while once I get settled somewhere I'll be fine I'm serious but right now and then to add on car trouble I don't know what's going on is it my well you know something's wrong I mean if it won't start and especially just this morning wasn't that long ago it wouldn't start even though it's starting now you know something's wrong I mean I'm not gonna pretend that oh there's nothing wrong anymore no I need to get, and so I've got to deal with that, you know? Yeah. Something I got to deal with. I guess I'll put some. There we go. Okay, I'm going to park that over here. Don't fall. I'm put my creamer in. 
I know. I know last time I did that, Pat. Now I go. Do you remember? I know. I'm such a child. I used to do this with my granddaughter all the time. She still couldn't do it. Remember that one? And then the raspberries. Yeah, well. I like I like to have me fun. Well, let's taste this. I know. Let's see. How hot is this? Mm. Oh, that's pretty strong. I probably should have only put it through once. I'm going to add some cold water to it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not willing to wait. I want it now. There we go. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Might be a little strong. You're, I should have, well, live and learn. It's a little strong for us. I'm still going to share it with you. But I probably should have just put it through once. Yeah. I'm cleaning my tray here. Well, I'll tell you, folks, my friends. I really do appreciate you being patient with me. Um, here I am traveling and I'm not giving you traveling videos. I just feel right now, I just feel like <sighs> it's so hot outside <laughs> to film outside. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I guess I could go sit in a restaurant. I know my daughter really doesn't want me to film inside of her house. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's just been, um, I'll, I'll, it, it'll get better um, once I get out of uh, the Midwest and I'm kind of on the road. But I will tell you that I've got a very special friend on his way to escort me out of Cincinnati just in case. And his name is Paul, and he travels with Abby, travels with Abby. I know a lot of you have seen his blog. Um, it's on WordPress, Travels with Abby, and he's on his way. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he's coming here, and I know so many of you have asked, where's Paul? Where's Abby? We miss him. Well, he's on his way, and we're going to be traveling together hereafter. So, yay. Um, he's been in Colorado, and he said he's seen it. He's had um, his fun, and I got my tags, and now that I'm having problems <laughs> with, we don't know what it is, this is my starter, or my battery, you don't know, but he's on his way, and he's going to, and what a gentleman, right? He's going to escort me, and then we can travel together, that way he can be back up if I need it, yeah. Because once I'm on the road, I mean, here, they're all backed up, I would have to wait, I'm not willing to wait. I'm not willing to to get a hotel room. They won't let me stay in their in their in their parking lot here, in their lot, mechanics lot, and I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars for uh, a hotel room motel. And no, uh, so we're going to just try to make it to Cheyenne, where we can find a good mechanic that um, Glenna knows, and Glenna and Teresa know, and. Um, she says it won't break my bank. That's what she said. She won't break your make. She said it won't break your bank, and you have family here waiting for you. It's like thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so we can get to uh, Cheyenne and decide where we're gonna go after that. It's a big surprise, isn't it? Where we're gonna go? Okay, coffee. It's coffee time. There you go. There's yours. Cheers. Mocha. a little strong isn't it i think i'm gonna put another creamer in mine okay i won't be running it through a couple i know you were probably watching me doing going don't do that lee don't do that well i couldn't hear you you didn't speak up loud enough <laughs> i know 
I'm being really silly today. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Hey. Two weeks, I'm going to be 69. If you can't be silly at 69, when can you be silly, right? A lot of you have asked me about my life. Well, um, I was the youngest of four. And, um, yeah. I always liked to have fun. I always have wanted to have fun. That was, that was like this big goal. Let's all have fun. Um, when I was younger, we took lots of vacations and everything. My, my dad, um, he got lots of vacation time. We'd always go on vacations, camping, whatever. Yeah, we liked to have fun. I didn't mean to flip anybody off. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, I got like a, a little cut right there. I promise, <laughs> I promise this is like a cut. Wow. This just happens to be on that finger. Trigger. Ring finger. And then you got the finger. Yeah. Thumb. Ooh. Thumbs up. Yeah. Little pinky. You got the pinky. Evil. Yeah. Pinky. Every. Yeah. Well, everyone has a name. This is the bird finger? What do you got? <laughs> I know. Trigger. Thumb. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It's a little bit better. Well, let's briefly um, talk boundaries. I think I might actually continue on with this on the next video, but I think it is important to talk about boundaries. I had somebody tell me way back, don't ever let, I mean, I'm traveling alone. Don't ever give guys rides if they say, oh, let me, let me sit in your van. Don't do it because they could easily take your keys and take off with you. Um, so, and I've helped with that. I, I have my boundaries. There's another boundary that we have to follow as nomads is parking too close. Those are our boundaries. If somebody parks too close to you, then uh, either you can say something to them or you have to move. And it's a bummer if you've got a big tent up and you've got your shower tent up, things like that. But you would want to move. And don't do it to somebody else. Don't park so close to them. Um, and I don't think it's, it's, it's a good idea for like these class A's and some of these bigger rigs. They do that in Quartzsite during the, during the heat of the big rush in Quartzsite. They'll do that. I've heard of people just, what they do is they want to move you out of there. You have a tent or you have a small rig. And what they'll do is they'll park really close to you. And then their friends come and eventually you have to move. So those are, those are boundaries that it would be nice if we all could follow. Yeah. Um, Another boundary is somebody getting actually too close to you. Those are boundaries. Um, if somebody's getting, we all have this invisible bubble around us. Some people have a bigger bubble than others. Some people are very private. They have a big bubble. But there are some people that let them get a little bit closer. Be careful. Those are your boundaries. Another thing, too, is you need to, as a nomad, you need to stand up for yourself. I had a friend who, um, she had a bigger rig than, um, than I do. And I just love her, and um, she'll know who I'm talking about when she sees this. But there were a couple of gals who came into her rig. Um, they were traveling in a caravan, and they came into her rig. But they were sitting there making fun of her in her rig. And they're sitting in her rig, enjoying the cool air, the seat, the, the table that was in there and everything. So this is a bigger rig. And when she told me that, it was really upsetting for her. And then she told me that, and I said, wow. Um, let me turn this on. I said, wow, um, you know, you have your, you have found it, you have rights and you might not want to let them in that time. Well, they did want to come in and she said, no, I'm busy. And then they, oh, she had a, an extra car with her. She cared. She towed a car and they always want to ride from her. And she goes, no, and that, you know, they were making fun of her and, and, um, the way she talked, uh, I said, no, no, no. I mean, you talk fine. You're gorgeous. You're, you're, you're a lovely person. And I just love talking to her. And she's, we text each other all the time. So you know who you are. But yeah, I'm not going to name names. I won't name names. But yeah, she had, I said, and I mentioned, I said, you put up your boundaries, honey. Put them up. You know, you don't have to be made fun of. Is there like oh there's sun coming you don't have to be made fun of in your own rig they're sitting in your seat and you had to actually sit over because they were taking up the space no that's not nice and if you're in a caravan you definitely have to put up boundaries oh my gosh yeah you have to decide 
like I heard in a, in a caravan, sometimes people will put up a sign outside of their their rig to say welcome or not accepting visitors. Yeah. So you could do that. And those are your boundaries. And if you're outside and you see something like that, please um, honor their boundaries. Yeah. And what I do, if they don't have something like that up, I kind of walk up to them and I will say, um, are you busy? Um, are you, uh, what I used to say, are you accepting visitors? Yeah. Now when we, Max and I and Susan were out in Flagstaff, out in the forest uh, a couple weeks ago, Susan was really smart. She put up a sign that said, she didn't put up, you're not welcome, but she put up welcome. When she was accepting friends, she put up a welcome sign. Um, the only problem I have with that, Susan, if you're watching that, the only problem is you told Max that, but you didn't tell me that. And so I didn't know the system. And I could have just walked up and said, hey, and you would have thought, well, why my sign isn't up? I didn't know about your sign. And you were parked so far away that if I was going to go see you, I would have had to walk over there. Oops, your sign isn't up and then walk back. So if you're going to do that and you're going to be around people and you want them to come up to you, I would say park a little bit closer and let everybody know in the group that you want to come see you that this is your system. But it's a cool, it's a cool idea. So putting up your boundaries, very good idea. Um, physical boundaries, emotional boundaries. If you're at a cave, I know there's a faux pas that goes around and there's like a, there's like a, um, a code when you're like around uh, the campfire. Uh, here's, here's a code that I found uh, in a boundary around the campfire. It's a good idea that when the campfire is done, take your seat home. Here's why. We had a lot of people at the meetup and they would leave their chairs there just around the campfire. But when it was time to gather again at the campfire, there were these seats around that nobody knew who they belonged to. So it was hard for people to put the seat. Well, I'm going to sit beside you, but there's these chairs right there. So always take your chair or move them out of the circle of the campfire. That way, if you decide you're late to the campfire or you decide this that you don't want to go to the campfire today or tonight, then, you know, then your seat's not in the way. Because if it's just setting up, so always take, those are like a boundary thing, always take your seat with you. Yeah. Um, sharing food, yet yeah, boundaries on sharing food or sharing water. If you can think of any more boundaries, I know that um, there are boundaries that we all have in life. I have them in my family. I know that my family has them for themselves. There are boundaries like you call before you come. Um, you don't just assume things. You just don't assume that you can do this or do that. There are boundaries. And what we need to do as family members or friends is let other people know what our boundaries are. Just put the rules out. If you are traveling with somebody, there's going to be boundaries. You know, like I just can't assume, like I didn't want to assume with Paul's van that I can just put stuff right, on, you know, go into his re refrigerator. He wouldn't have mind, but I, I'm a boundary girl and I was kind of brought up that way. And my children, I brought my children up that way. Let me get comfortable here. I'm sitting on my legs. I know I've got a, got a, uh got a rib. <laughs> Let's pull this closer. We've got the sun coming through. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. Here comes the sun and I say it's all right. Do, 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 as long as I knew it was okay that I could just open up his cooler. But even then, I still, well, is that a bird or a bug that just, ooh, it was big. Um, I knew that I would always ask. I said, well, it's okay if I get in your cooler, you know. I just think it's courtesy. I guess boundaries, you consider boundaries courtesy.
courtesy. Yeah, it's a courtesy. So what other kind of boundaries can you think of? Yeah. Just like you don't go in other people's yards without asking, you know, unless you're such good friends and neighbors. Yeah. Okay, so I will end this. This is what's going on. This is the skinny on Minnie Man Lee. Yeah, she's got something wrong. She doesn't know what it is. And it's a glitch. And she's going to try to make it to Cheyenne with the help and the escort service of Paul and Abby. <laughs> yes. And, um, and again, I'm kind of... I've lost sleep last night. I've been doing pretty good, but I lost sleep. So I love you guys so much. Um, I got the book on Amazon, How to Live in a Minivan. Just type in on Amazon, Minivan Lee, and the book will come up. And I've got um, new collections of the Neck Gators. Still have some of these. Um, this is purple tie-dye. I love the green in there, too. I've still got those. I've got some neck, uh, arm gaiters, and I've got the exercise tapes, yeah. So, um, is there anything else? Uh, join the Facebook group, Minnie Van Lee's Snowman Life Facebook group. I haven't been doing the podcast. Um, waiting for Paul to see if he wants to continue doing it. He doesn't have to, but um, otherwise, I need people to interview. It's, a podcast is really hard with just one person. It really is. Podcast is made for a conversation between two, two or three people. Yeah. But there's so much to talk about and I will mention I think one of my next videos is going to be on gas how to conserve on gas because I will tell you just coming here $500 in gas already and I know that's going to be another five that's a thousand dollars in gas gas prices are up the only decent gas price I found and that wasn't even considered decent was in um near St. Louis in Missouri yeah so yeah there you go. If you want to support me, yeah, gas prices has pretty much taken a lot of my cash. So if you want to support me with um, gas, you know how to you know how to do it. I ain't going to mention it again. So yeah, um, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Go to Minnie Van Lee for these and these and the exercise tapes and for support. And there's a gift. I have a gift section if you want to just send me a gift and say, we love you, Lee. And um, I'm going to send you a gift but you don't have to. I love you guys. Bye. Now, there is an update. I did call AAA, and it came and he tested out the battery, right? Let's get it a little bit. Let's get the battery on here. He tested out the battery. Put the prongs on. Red goes on plus, black goes on minus, okay? Now, a lot of you actually carry jump starters with you. But he tested out the whole thing. I have premium and they can come out and check my battery and my battery system, the whole system, yeah. So the alter, he checked the alternator, perfect. Battery was perfect at 100%. And the starter, which I suspected, he said was checked out good. But with the battery and the starter, of course it's gonna test out 100%. It was running, yeah. So. Yeah, um, the last time I was at Volvo Lean, they said it only tested out at about 70, lower 70% because it wasn't up to um, top standards. And it's a four year old battery. So these are things, why am I telling you this? A lot of you guys, you already know this. There's a lot of gals out there that don't know this. So I'm going through everything that I experienced for your experience and you can figure these things out. Now the starter tested out perfect because if it starts, it's going to test out perfect. The only way they can diagnose a starter is if it's not starting. So I said, so basically I through all of this, I have figured out you have to be stranded somewhere before you can get your starter diagnosed. He goes, yep, that's scary. I wish it wasn't that way. I don't know. Um, it's, it is what it is. So there you go. It is what it is. 
he asked me why the cover was off on there. And I said, because I have mechanical friends and they said it's ridiculous to have it on there. He goes, all it does is trap in heat in your motor and you don't want that. So I took it off. He goes, oh, okay, that looks interesting. You know, I guess he's never heard of that. But yeah, I do have, I took it off. As soon as I bought this van, I took it off and I threw it away. I want air to flow. And I was told, hey, Mark, Mark uh, told me that um, in Phoenix, that this, uh, anybody who knows anything about cars, they take those off and get rid of them. Okay, so that's what's happening. Now, with AAA, I can't get a new battery unless it's dead. So he said tomorrow morning, which I will do an update this morning, it wouldn't start. I had to keep trying. Finally went, rrr, rrr, rrr. did that twice and then finally went, kicked in. Okay. So, um, for any of you that know more about cars and you don't think that it's the battery, leave me a comment. But I am going to get a new battery. Either AAA will get me a new battery. It has to be dead before they give me a new one. So he said, if you want a new one, you got to call them. Um, before, if it won't start, call them right away that it's not starting. They'll come out and they'll get you a new battery. If not, I'll I'll buy a new battery. Yeah. Um, Glenna and Paul and I at Quartzsite. Oh, yeah. We were playing around with the batteries. And we took this off two or three times. So I know how to do it. I'm very, I'm very capable of changing out a battery. Paul is on his way. He's going to get here. And we're just anxious to see each other. And um, start traveling together again. So it's not... Even if I didn't have car trouble, he'd probably come here to escort me back western, westward ho. Yeah. There was a movie I want to ask. It's called Westward Ho the Women. Does anybody know that movie? Oh, my gosh. I remember watching that when I was a young teenager. Fascinating movie called Westward Ho the Women. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's an oldie. I think it's black and white. So this is what's going on. So, so gals... If your car is exhibiting any of these signs, these are things that you can think about. Um, it could be, it could be the starter. I don't know. I'm starting the clues I'm getting. Valvoline saying on my 06, when it, when this battery was in my 06, Valvoline said, it's not up to par. It kind of, my 06 kind of acted up in Tucson before I went to Quartzsite. So... Yeah, this was, it could, I, I'm thinking it's the battery. Easy peasy, I'm hoping it's the battery because that's easy. So that's my update on what's happening. I'm going to keep you updated. And I think this is good. I think this is good information for y'all um, because a lot of us don't know what's going under the hood. I always like to know. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm at Planet Fitness parking lot. I'm going to go into Planet Fitness right there. Get on the treadmill. Walk. Get my stretching. And then later in the day, go in and get my workout going on. Because I don't want to worry. I could do my video. But don't forget, I got those videos. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't even come here today. <laughs> I've been dealing with car issues. Yeah love you guys if you found this interesting please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe it really helps me i love you guys Mwah. bye